Welcome back. It's been a little while since we've taken a look at a new resin 3D printer. This is the Elgoo Saturn 3, and we're going to have a little chat about it right now. Jesus Christ, it's so... Okay, I've got to put it down. It's way too heavy. Why did I do that? What was the point? Stupid idea. That's right, Elgu sent me the Saturn 3, my first ever 12K resin 3D printer, by the way, which I was super happy, happy about. Oh my god, I've just noticed it's right, it's right in the shot. Okay, little bit of behind the scenes, little bit of how the sausage is made, if you want to phrase it like that. No one wants to phrase it like that. When I'm doing this whole standing up thing, I just shove my chair over there, right? There's a nice little nook there that it sits in nicely. So I put the printer on that, but it's very clearly still in shot. It's also packed to front. And, okay, I'm gonna go move that, one moment. Anyway, where were we? That might be the most needlessly chaotic start to any video I've ever made, which is kind of impressive given the context of this whole mess. As I was saying before I so rudely interrupted myself with irrelevant nonsense, Elgu sent me the Saturn 3, my first 12K 3D printer, and initially I had mild issues, okay? I'm not gonna lie, I had slight problems. Nothing to do with the printer and everything to do with the temperature in the UK at the moment. See, when it comes to resin printing especially, you really need stable temperatures. You kind of need it for FDM as well, but it's not quite as bad as resin. I've found I have FDM printers running in the garage where there is no heating, and generally speaking, they will knock stuff out no problem, even though it's a bit chilly. You can mess with the temperatures to compensate for it, and as long as they're not drafty, you can just about get away with it. Resin printing, if you're trying to print in a very cold room, which this is, and the garage is, you run into issues, and that's exactly the problem I had testing the Saturn 3. So this became a two-pronged test. I was testing ways to keep the resin at the right temperature, and I was testing the Saturn 3, which, funnily enough, I ended up quite liking. Although at this point I've come to expect a certain quality from Elgu, and so far nothing has really fallen below that standard. And the fact is that the Saturn 3 is very similar to the Saturn 2. Similar chassis, in fact I think it might be the same chassis. Very similar footprint, of course the Saturn 3 being a 12k printer does produce higher detail prints but overall if you're used to one it's very very easy to shift over to the other especially since the interface is pretty much exactly the same. Also yes I am now sitting down because that turned off and then this reset itself and I can't get it to stand back up again. Now the test that I ran given that I was having issues with just ambient temperature and keeping the resin up to temperature for printing was seeing whether this worked which I mean, on the surface of it, it just kind of looks like a weird rubber strip with a cable running out of it. And, I mean, to be fair, that's kind of what this is. This is like a heating strip. It's basically used by brewers who brew beer and the like, and you want to keep things at a stable temperature. You wrap one of these around your jug, your container, your urn, whatever you've, urn, whatever you've got, and this heats up, and you can keep an eye on the temperature and set it at a particular temperature, and it will stay like that for as long as it is turned on. And this is what I used to sort out my issue with it being too cold for resin printing. I wrapped this round the vat on the Saturn 3. I set it to about 20 to 22 degrees. It was a little inconsistent due to not having consistent contact points. This is just a little bit too big. It's just that bit too big where it's hard to get it to sit perfectly around every part of the vat. I mean, admittedly, I was also kind of winging it using giant elastic bands, which I did wonder whether there'd be an issue with, but you know what? So far, I've not had any problems. It's worked pretty much flawlessly, but it does mean that it doesn't sit exactly against the vat all the way around. What I did was I heated the resin in a bowl of hot water in the bottle. I didn't pour the resin into the water. That would be madness. And then I heated this on the vat, poured the resin in when this was up to temperature, and it kept it completely stable at just the right temperature for flawless printing. So, I will say right now that if you're having trouble with that, if you struggle with keeping the room at a specific temperature, or you are in a room that doesn't maybe get that good heating, or remains cold no matter what you do, if you want to print out in the garage for instance, not many people have a heated garage, it's kind of pointless, then I can wholeheartedly recommend using this sort of thing. I'll put a link in the description for this particular one, but you might want to measure your vat and work out exactly what type of these would be best for you. So, with the temperature 
issue sorted. How did I actually get on with the Saturn 3? And what are the specs of the Saturn 3? We should cover that. Let's have a little look. As you already know, it's a 12K printer. It has a 10-inch LCD screen, a build volume of 218 by 122, well, technically 218.88 by 122.88, by 250. There's also an upgraded heat dissipation system. You might be thinking, why am I mentioning that? Well, having had the Saturn 2 and the Saturn 1, the Saturn 3 seems to run cooler than both. So just thought it was worth pointing out. Now, something that I'm mentioning because it has genuinely made quite a big difference to my prints is the build plate. On the Saturn 1, the Saturn 2, both of those, they had just a flat, plain build plate. There was nothing fancy going on. With the Saturn 3, it has like laser carved patterns in it. And that genuinely seems to make a difference to how well things adhere to the plate. Now, I don't know whether that's just anecdotal, but I've also found it extremely difficult to get stuff off the plate at times because it's been sealed on so well, which is both a complaint and not a complaint. On the one hand, it does make cleanup a little more of an effort because it's harder to get stuff off the plate. On the other hand, no one likes having stuff separate from the plate and end up like sealing itself to the bottom of the vat. No one wants that. So I'm not really complaining about it because it genuinely has made a difference in terms of things just staying where they're supposed to. Now, something that I want to mention, which is not a particularly big deal unless you're first getting into resin printing, because if you've been printing for any length of time, you'll know full well that resin is toxic. It's not something you want to be messing around with. It is dangerous to skin. You don't want to get it anywhere near your eyes or anything like that. And there is something mentioned on the site that talks about the plug-in air purifier for the Saturn 3. Something that was available for the Saturn 2 as well. Um, and it mentions odour-free printing. That isn't the case. I mean, the fact is that as soon as you start printing using resin, you will most likely be able to smell it. I can straight away. The second it starts like activating, in fact, as soon as it's poured out of the bottle, you can smell it. And even with the lid fully sealed and the air purifier plugged in you will notice that it's there and i can't overstate enough that you don't really want to be printing in the room that you are in now the saturn 3 is in this room currently because i was attempting to get some decent footage of it whilst it was printing but i had a bunch of failures due to the temperature and as such that idea went out of the window but i wasn't in here whilst it was printing that window right there was open the whole time i had the air purifier running actually plugged into the saturn 3 i have a standalone air purifier that was running as well and still the air quality was not great you need to make sure that you have got really good ventilation when you're running these things and i'm afraid no matter how good the purifier is, the chances are you're not going to get an odour-free printing environment. You're going to be able to tell that there's resin out and being activated. So I'm just letting you know that in case you are not familiar with resin printing as a whole or you're thinking about getting into it. It's a nice idea. Does it make it more, like, does it make it more palatable? Is it, like, worse if you don't have the purifiers running? I think, honestly, yeah, it is worse if you don't have them, but it doesn't get rid of all of that completely. It has... A noticeable effect but it does not mean that you can just stand around in the room for six hours whilst the print is going i would not recommend that at all now with all of that out of the way what sort of print quality can you expect from the saturn 3 well i'll show you these are a few models from beast jar and miniatures one of my favorite creators who do stls i love their stuff 99.9 percent .9 of the time and hopefully when you take a look at these you will understand why it's fair to say that i'm really really impressed with the detail on these models like they've come out so so well i chose the two chronomancer models specifically because there's a really good mix of materials you've got flat sections with embossed areas when it comes to the spells that they're casting you've got cloth in the form of the hood and the cloak there are some armor panels you've got things like belts scrolls which have come out so well the detail is crazy on the scrolls you've got little mechanical parts pipes and the like and the gas mask that one of them is wearing is so finely detailed and it came out absolutely perfect. They were like, they were perfect to test on this, to be honest. They're also quite small. Like, they're sort of heroic scale miniatures. They're about the height of a Primary Space Marine. So they are not massive. You know, for the amount of detail packed in, they're not particularly big. But they came out really, really nicely. I took really close up pictures so you could see the 
pretty much lack of layer lines. There are really none to speak of. You can kind of pick them out if you really stare, but for the most part, they came out incredibly clean. The spooky flying mage man with the giant axe had so much cloth, I just had to. I love painting cloth, so when I saw that, I was like, okay, well, I need that immediately. And again, there's lots of detail on the armor. It's kind of this not quite organic, but multi-layered, embossed and engraved sort of material. And it just came out so nicely. Even compared to the Saturn 2 8K, which I also have, the Saturn 3 picks out details in a way that the Saturn 2 just doesn't. And to be clear, I've got absolutely no complaints about how well the Saturn 2 picks out details. Like previously, I thought that was pretty much as good as I was ever going to get, and yet here we are. For the Fiery Demon minions, I really wanted to see how it dealt with lots of kind of curved and flame-like textures and shapes, and again, it came out pretty much absolutely perfect. On a side note, these were fun to clean up. And when I say fun, I mean not all that fun. There's a lot of a uh, lot of very small pointy surfaces on this that really get the heart going when you feel like you've snapped something you shouldn't have snapped. Finally, we've got the big ugly lad with all the tentacles and the multiple faces and arms and hands and ribs and flat and oh dear lord, what an absolute nightmare this thing is. I love it. It's fantastic. Lots of kind of organic textures on this. The tentacles are sort of worm-like, very kind of ribbed and segmented which i thought would be fun there's lots and lots of like gaps and stuff as well lots of holes and sort of crevices oh terrible word all the way through this model which i thought would make it a good candidate for uh for seeing what this thing can do and yeah again it's come out really really nicely especially things like the teeth like the individual teeth that actually look like individual teeth it's great i love it now there is something a lot bigger to come from the saturn 3 but i've only got four pieces of it printed so far out of i think it's like 12 or 14 so that's going to be a follow-up video but i've been really impressed with it the detail it produces is absolutely fantastic when it comes to actually dialing it in outside of the temperature issues that i had it was absolutely perfect i leveled it and the only thing that stopped it from working flawlessly from the beginning was not having a consistent temperature in the room that it was in. And as soon as I solved that issue, it was absolutely perfect. And it's not done me wrong since. As I say, it's not just those I've printed so far. There is other stuff too, but it's not quite ready for an unveiling yet, I think is probably the way to phrase it. So there you go, I've been really impressed by the Saturn 3, and I'm looking forward to churning out many more nightmarish horrors to throw at my D&D party, because they're going to look absolutely fantastic whilst they're murdering the lot of them. Thank you to Elgu for sending the Saturn 3 over for review. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and if you're interested in the printer, there will be links in the description and in the pinned comment, so go and take a look if you would like. Again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you for the next one.